Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the invocation, which will be delivered by the Chaplain of the Marine Corps, Rear Admiral Kerry H. Cash, Chaplain Corps, United States Navy. I invite you to join me in prayer. Almighty God, your word teaches us that it is you who train our hands for battle, you who help us advance against a troop, you who give us strength that our arms can bend a bow of bronze. O oh Lord, as we gather to celebrate the 247 years of the Marine Corps, we are reminded that peace is not something that comes easy. Rather, it is something we must be willing to fight for. In your providence, O oh God, you have called from every generation a few good men and women who, while others sleep soundly in their beds, stand ready to answer those who would wish us harm. We call these few Marines. Their testament is not written in words, but in deeds. The deserts of Tripoli, the forests of France, coral reefs and beaches of the South Pacific, the valleys of Korea and the jungles of Vietnam, the mountains and wadis of the Middle East. These lands are the ledger where freedom and peace have been written into the history of our world. For Marines everywhere, we give you thanks, O oh God. Let no foreign aggressor overcome them. Let no complacency weaken them. Let no dissonant voice imperil their capacity to live pure, speak true, and right wrong. On this 247th birthday of the Corps, may every Marine be proud of their heritage, and may all of us endeavor to live a life that is simper fidelis. Amen. If you would direct your attention to the right of the stage, you will find an illuminated table that has been prepared in honor of our fallen comrades. It symbolizes the valiant sacrifices of our Marine Corps Navy team. Tonight, we pay special tribute to the members of our Marine Corps family who have been taken from us. Their sacrifices and the sacrifices of their families help preserve our nation's freedom and enable millions of our citizens to enjoy the American dream. We stand free today because of them. Ladies and gentlemen, please join in a moment of silence as we pause to honor those brave men and women who have given their lives in the service of our country. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated and direct your attention to the video screens. The United States Marine Drum and Bugle Corps opens this evening with a march composed in honor of United States Naval Service personnel whose heroic actions inspired these famous words, Uncommon Valor. The concert continues with a dynamic song written by Nat McIntosh of Youngblood Brass Band, Brooklyn. The concert closes with one of this nation's most popular songs of freedom, Battle Hymn of the Republic. Ladies and gentlemen, under the direction of Chief Warrant Officer 2, Courtney Lawrence, Marine Barracks, Washington, D.C. proudly presents the Commandant Zone, United States Marine Drum and Bugle Corps.
Ladies and gentlemen, honored and distinguished guests, friends, and fellow Marines, welcome and happy birthday. This evening, we have gathered to celebrate the founding of our Marine Corps and pay tribute to the few good men and women, as well as the silent regiments of yesteryear who shaped our Corps' proud history. We hope our guests will sense the tremendous pride we Marines feel tonight as we collectively reminisce on 247 years of heritage and proudly look to the future of our Marine Corps. Ladies and gentlemen, please join in welcoming to the ballroom the Commandant of the Marine Corps, General David H. Berger, and tonight's guest of honor, Medal of Honor recipient, Corporal Kyle Carpenter, United States Marine Corps. Please remain standing for honors to General David H. Berger. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand by for the presentation of the colors. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a privilege to introduce the baritone vocalist of the President's Own United States Marine Band, Master Gunnery Sergeant Kevin Benear, who will sing our national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light 
What so proudly we hailed At the twilight's last gleaming Whose broad stripes and bright stars Through the perilous fight O'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. And the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave O'er the land of the free And the home of the Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing for the presentation of the Marine Corps birthday cake. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. On 1 November 1921, the 13th Commandant of the Marine Corps, Lieutenant General John A. Lejeune, directed that a reminder of the honorable service of the Corps be published by every command to all Marines around the globe on the birthday of the Corps. 
Since that day, Marines have continued to distinguish themselves on many battlefields and foreign shores in war and peace. On this birthday of the Corps, therefore, in compliance with the will of our 13th Commandant, Article 38 of the Marine Corps Manual, edition of 1921, is republished as follows. On November 10th, 1775, a Corps Marines was created by a resolution of the Continental Congress. Since that date, many thousand men have borne the name Marine. In memory of them, it is fitting that we, who are Marines, should commemorate the birthday of our Corps by calling to mind the glories of its long and illustrious history. The record of our Corps is one which will bear comparison with that of the most famous military organization in the world's history. During 90 of the 146 years of its existence, the Marine Corps has been in action against the nation's foes. From the Battle of Trenton to the Argonne, Marines have won foremost honors in war and in the long eras of tranquility at home. Generation after generation of Marines have grown gray in war in both hemispheres and in every corner of the seven seas, so that our country and its citizens might enjoy peace and security. In every battle and skirmish since the birth of our Corps, Marines have acquitted themselves with the greatest distinction, winning new honors on each occasion until the term Marine has come to signify all that is highest in military efficiency and soldierly virtue. This high name of distinction and soldier repute, we who are Marines today have received from those who preceded us in the Corps. With it, we have also received from them the internal spirit which has animated our Corps from generation to generation and has been the distinguishing mark of the Marines in every age. So long as this spirit continues to flourish, Marines will be found equal to every emergency in the future as they have been in the past. And the men of our nation will regard us as worthy successors to the long line of illustrious men who have served as soldiers of the sea since the founding of our Corps. This timeless and inspiring message of our 13th Commandant has left its mark in the hearts and minds of Marines. By deed and act, from Bella Wood to the Argonne, from Guadalcanal to Iwo Jima, from Incheon to the Korean Armistice, in interventions from Lebanon to the Dominican Republic, from the opening battles in Vietnam to Grenada, Panama, and Kuwait, and from operations in Somalia and Kosovo to those in Iraq and Afghanistan, Marines have continued to epitomize those qualities which are their legacy. The success they have achieved in combat and the faith they have borne in peace will endure. The Commandant and our many friends have added their hearty praise and congratulations on this, our 247th birthday. The Marine Corps cake cutting ceremony is important to all Marines as it is an annual renewal of each Marine's commitment to the Corps and the Corps' commitment to our nation's quest for peace and freedom worldwide. The birthday cake is traditionally cut with the Mameluk sword as a reminder that we are a band of warriors committed to carrying the sword so that our nation may live in peace. As is our custom, General Berger will now present the first piece of cake to our guest of honor, Medal of Honor recipient, Corporal Kyle Carpenter. By tradition, the next piece of cake is presented to the oldest Marine in attendance as a sign of honor and respect accorded to experience and seniority. This evening, our oldest Marine present is First Lieutenant Gerald F. Myrna, who was born on 1 April, 1930. First Lieutenant Myrna enlisted in the Marine Corps on 2 April, 1947. During his 22-year Marine Corps career, he served in both the Korean and Vietnam Wars, achieving the rank of Master Gunnery Sergeant and subsequently being commissioned to First Lieutenant. He currently resides in Alexandria, Virginia.
For 247 years, our experienced Marines have nurtured and led young Marines to fill our ranks and renew our Corps. Our oldest Marine will now pass the piece of cake to the youngest Marine, symbolizing the passing of wisdom, knowledge, and experience, as well as trust and confidence in those who will carry on our Marine Corps traditions in the future. The youngest Marine present. <laughs> the youngest Marine present is Private First Class Cyrus Jenks, born on 28 May 2003. Private First Class Jenks enlisted in the Marine Corps on 3 January 2022. He is currently assigned to Headquarters Battalion, Henderson Hall. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please join in congratulating our cake recipients. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the retirement of the colors. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated.
Ladies and gentlemen, the Commandant of the Marine Corps, General David H. Berger. Good evening. Happy birthday, Marines. All right, we waited three years for this. Happy birthday, Marines. Very good. That, that's better. Uh, first of all, uh, nothing like this happens overnight without a lot of rehearsals and a lot of people putting time and energy into it. So from the color guard to the cake detail, the sword escort, um, all of the protocol, the period Marines, the security, can you please join me in thanking all of the Marines who were in the ceremony? This is the Marine Corps' birthday, but we don't go alone. So this is a little bit unusual, but would you also please join me in recognizing all of the docs, the corpsmen, the RPs, the chaplains that go with us every time we deploy. I won't go through the whole list of guests tonight. I would be up here a long time, but I will just highlight two uh, that are very special guests for us this evening. First of all, your 78th Secretary of the Navy, the Honorable Carlos Del Toro and his wife, Betty. And the other one I would recognize is our 32nd Chief of Naval Operations, Admiral Mike Gilday, and his wife, Linda. This is a, a special evening this evening. Um, there's one group that hardly ever gets recognized, but we're going to say thanks to them this evening, and that is um, the families. So if, if I could ask, if you're a spouse, a brother, sister, mom, dad, child, uncle, aunt, if you are a family member of a Marine or a sailor, please stand up so we can recognize you tonight. All right, we haven't had a, uh, a ball here in a few years because of the pandemic. And it was clear to me before uh, Kyle and I walked in, some things though, I, apparently you don't need to rehearse, even if you hadn't done them in a couple of years. There's a dilemma, there's the hard decision that every Marine has to make at the birthday ball. And you and I know what it is, it's the five minute warning when you can either go to the bathroom or to the bar. One, you only have time to make it to one. And it's pretty clear looking around at the tables which one you all went to. So I will not talk for uh, very long because uh, you didn't come here to, uh, to hear me. I would say just one quick word though. This is uh, our night around the world and Although we haven't had the chance to get together physically in a couple years around the world as a large group because of the pandemic, it did drive home to me, to me and Donna, one thing. It's probably a good reminder. It actually doesn't matter where we do it, right? It doesn't matter the fancy uniforms. It doesn't matter a cocktail hour. What matters is who we are. And that's why we're here this evening. Not where we are, but who we are. Because around the world, this week, doesn't matter if you're in a grand ball win, ballroom, or you're on board ship, or you're in the field eating MREs, you're gonna find something in that bag of MREs and you're gonna cut it. And somebody there is gonna have General Lejeune's message and they're gonna read it. 
And sometimes those are the best birthdays of all. It doesn't matter where. Tonight's about who we are. So it is a very special night. I am privileged. Uh, you and I are honored to have with us Kyle Carpenter. I will not go through his biography. You don't need me to, and he wouldn't allow me to. But we, he's a very special Marine for those of us who know him. He's joined here this evening by Brittany, his wife, and his mom and dad, Jim and Robin, Corporal Kyle Carpenter, your guest of honor. I told you I'd keep it short. You put this up here. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. All right, all right. Sit down, sit down, sit down. Well, I'll say this is probably the first time I have not had to adjust the microphone to my height level. So we're off to a great start. And like General Berger said, it doesn't matter where we are, whether we're here in Washington, D.C., in a beautiful hotel with all of the beautiful people here, or if like 12 years ago, you were deep behind enemy lines in Marj, Afghanistan, with no shower for seven months, and somehow the Marine Corps drops you something that resembles a birthday cake. <laughs> Unlike the one tonight, you know, they say Marines are not sophisticated, but I've never seen a fountain in a birthday cake before. <laughs> <laughs> but without a shower for seven months, and we not only, because of our birthday is so important, and we value where we came from and our traditions and our history and the courage that came before us. We not only got a birthday cake uh, deep in enemy territory, uh, but we also had to go get shot at uh, to retrieve it out of the landing zone uh, <laughs> back behind our base. But as all of you know, Marine Corps birthdays come in many uh, shapes and sizes. And every single day, I am reminded by moments, big or small, of how amazing life is. And this is one of those moments, and I am truly grateful. And to uh, the Commandant and Sergeant Major Black, uh, thank you for the selfless job you've done, the path that you have helped continue to pave. Uh, but beyond that, thank you for being my friend. It means more than I could ever express, and I appreciate it. All right, Marines, so who's ready for a safety brief? <laughs> hey, I want to begin tonight by taking a moment to first appreciate the fact that we are alive and here in this moment that all of our journeys have led us to our paths crossing tonight for this birthday celebration together. And second, I want us to reflect on the generations of Marines and the sacrifice that came before us and built the foundation for which we now stand upon. The Marines who with white knuckles gripped their rifles with fixed bayonets as they prepared to take the fight onto enemy ships through cannon fire on the open ocean. The Marines who fought savagely and courageously through the thick smoke and trees of Bella Wood, forever etching the legendary nickname and fear of the devil dog into history. The Marines who took their last breath charging island beaches throughout the Pacific. The Marines who bled out across the lush fields of Vietnam. And those who sadly came back to an ungrateful nation. 
the Marines of Desert Shield and Storm who fought through a desert of thick black smoke to help liberate the people of Kuwait. The Marines who went house to house, street to street, and firefight to firefight to give hope, safety, and a better life to the oppressed people of Iraq under Saddam's regime. The Marines who waded through sewage canals every day, inched down IED-filled roads and villages, and who fought every single day to take the fight to an enemy who has no regard for women, children, or human life. Women who were stoned to death and children who asked me personally through interpreters, if, is everywhere in America like Disney World? Do you really have a room in your house that gives you water? The Marines who were tortured in prisoner of war camps and those who are still guarded at this very moment only a few miles down the road at the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. Marines, we are a beacon of hope for those around the world who wake up every day hoping that today's sunrise will be a little better, more hopeful, and less scary than the days before. Be proud of that. And be proud of what you did when no one else made you, and when you could have done anything else in the world with your life, you, choose to, you chose to stand up and to take that initiative, to go and find that recruiting station, and to give up to your life for your nation, for each other, for people you will never meet and for those who desperately need us around the world. How powerful and profound. Our service and the legacy we helped build and maintain will never fade and will never waver. And just like our enduring legacy, so is our responsibility. Our timeless oath and responsibility as Marines, veterans, and patriots to uphold the honorable standards, expectations, and professionalism that comes with wearing the sacred cloth of our nation. Don't ever be that Marine who is first to say, there are no former Marines but the last to strive to live an exemplary life. On November 21st, 2010, I felt myself bleeding out on a hot, dusty rooftop in Marj, Afghanistan. After a hand grenade tore through my body, changing my life forever. And in the past 12 years, since those seemingly final moments, I have learned a few lessons from my strange, unexpected, difficult, but beautiful journey. Lessons that, at times, only came to me because I was forced to search through darkness. Perspective. Perspective can change your life and your world. There is always a silver lining, although at times very faint, there is always a silver lining. I've learned that it is okay to struggle and that adversity is the common thread throughout every single person in this room and every single person on this earth. That our journey is our own. 
and should never be compared with others. We all live and we all heal in our own time and in our own way. And that everyone has done more than some and less than others. I've learned that no matter what happens in life, no matter how hard you get knocked down or blown up, whatever insurmountable odds you are faced with, you only really ever have two options. You can get up and take that small, shaky, uncertain step forward, or you will stay exactly where you are for the rest of your life. I have learned that any worthy victory can only be achieved through hard work, sacrifice, and optimism. And lastly, I have learned that the smallest of steps completes the grandest of journeys. To the family members who are here, to my mom and dad and my wife Brittany, thank you. You serve with us and you sacrifice with us. We couldn't do it without you, and we are better because of you. To the corpsmen who risked their lives to save others, who saved me, thank you will never be enough. And to you, Marines, although sometimes I feel like I didn't give enough, serving beside you and bleeding with you was my greatest honor. Always remember that you are worth it. Stay motivated, Semper Fidelis, and happy 247th birthday, Marines. Ra. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the Commandant and the Sergeant Major of the Marine Corps would like every guest in the ballroom to join Master Gunnery Sergeant Benear as he leads us in the singing of all three verses of the Marine's hymn. Let's stand and sing, Marines! Let me hear you! From the halls of Montezuma to the shores of Tripoli, we fight our country's battles in the air on land and sea. First to fight for right and freedom and to keep our honor clean. We are proud to claim the title of United States Marine. Our flags unfurl to every breeze from dawn to setting sun. We have fought in every clime and place where we could take a gun. In the snow of far off northern lands and in sunny tropic scenes, you will find us always on the job, the United States Marines. Here's health to you and to our Corps, which we are proud to serve. In many a strife we fought for life and never lost our nerve. 
If the army and the navy ever look on heaven's scenes, they will find the streets are guarded by United States Marines. Hoorah! Happy birthday!